Hello, this is Paul Cheney with Spartan Design University, where we try and make learning as easy as possible. We're almost done creating our HTML5 CSS3 responsive start file. In this example, I've added a CSS reset to our style sheet list in the head of this document. This is one that's created by Eric Meyer, and basically it removes all of the default styling that's applied by browsers so that we're starting with a clean slate. And we can see that one here on the page source as a link to reset.css. And this is all it looks like. That's just taken straight from Eric Myers and dropped in. The second thing that's new is that we're adding a box model recommended by Paul Irish. Now this is an article that talks more about how and why that works but it removes many of the problems that we used to fight as designers with different browsers sizing boxes differently. Let me give you just a quick demonstration of this now pre-problem. It doesn't exist anymore if you use that little line of code. It used to be that when you created a box, a div, a paragraph, whatever, and you gave it a width, let's say we gave it a width equal to a 200 pixels it would display 200 pixels on all browsers. But if we started adding padding, which you know is inside the box, and margin, which is outside the box, some browsers would add it, the margin and the padding, to this. So let's say there was 20 pixels out here and 10 pixels in here. That means there's 10 over here and 20 over here this box could wind up being 200 plus 10 plus 10 plus 20 plus 20. On other browsers, it would be 200 plus 20 plus 20. And so when it comes to laying out pages, it was an absolute nightmare. Well, this solves the problem of having padding always added to the inside of the box, always, always, always on all browsers, and margin added to the outside of the box on all browsers all the time. So that problem is now gone, thank heavens. Let me show you what that looks like. That one's in our phone default. Remember the phone applies to all phones, tablets, and desktops. And as soon as it pulls up here, there we go. So there's that WebKit adjust size we looked at earlier, which fixes the phone's resize. But this is the box model. This first one's just a comment, but this is the actual statement right here. Notice that it has a star. That means it applies to all elements in the document. And basically, there's a Mozilla version, there's a WebKit version, and then there's the standard W3C version. But all we're doing is doing the box sizing so that it works like it's supposed to. So I recommend that for all designs going forward. So let's take a look at this site. We've got it. Remember, it's a progressive enhancement. So on the phone, only the rules from the phone are working. Therefore, this is red. We go to tablet. This rule kicks in addition, in addition to the phone one. And here we've got the desktop kicking in as well. Now I've broken this one. Instead of breaking it at 550 as in the previous example, I've now broken it at 600, which means that on my phone, when we take a look at that, let me pull that up here. Here, I've got the 320, which is red, and when I flip it to landscape, it's still just the, the uh, top one that is red. Now, this is an H1, but because of the Eric Myers reset, it's rendered exactly the same as everything else, which is 16 pixels, and it's styled it red. If we go now to our tablet. I've now got the rules for the phone and the rules for the tablet kicking in in both directions because my breakpoint is 1140 and that holds my tablet in both landscape and portrait. 